we have the finite difference approximation, which is d u i d t equal to kappa u i plus 1 plus u i minus 1 minus 2 times u i divided by delta x squared. We can also apply the Fourier series on the discrete solution. All right. So here, we remember that u of i is defined as the numerical solution at u times i delta x, right? And if you represent using the same Fourier series, we get a summation over k of u head of k e to the j k instead of x, we have i delta x. Now you know why we use j for the square root of minus 1, because we have i as the index. All right. So, but this summation, it actually doesn't make sense to sum over from minus infinity to infinity because of the phenomenon called aliasing. So what does aliasing mean? Aliasing means that for a particular UK and a different UK that is, that is of a different K, the effect of this term is going to be the same, exactly the same, represented on the discrete grid. So let's imagine we have a discrete grid that is 0, delta x, etc., all the way to 2 pi. Okay. The question, intuitively thinking, if I have one Fourier mode that is exactly one period, all right, so that is k equal to what? 1 or minus 1, right? So e to the e to the uh, j k, uh, sorry e to the j i delta x is a waveform like that. All right. Now, if I only look at the function value at the discrete points, I can actually draw a different wave that looks exactly the same on these discrete points. How do I draw that? Anybody have any idea how can I draw a different wave that has exactly the same value at these discrete points? Straight lines. Huh? Straight lines. Straight lines? But remember, I have to be sinusoidal functions. Sine of something or cosine of something. Yes? A 2 pi increase in the frequency? That's a good thought, but like 2 pi is not a frequency, 2 pi is a period, right? So you're thinking of increasing the frequency to something that makes it the same? Anybody wants to come and draw something? That's a very good idea. So we no longer are thinking of functions that are long and smooth. We're thinking of functions that are have a period that is almost equal to one grid point, right? So if we draw a function like that, so we still have maximum being the same, but we have a function that goes like this, and back to minus one, and come back to here. It has exactly the same function value, and now it goes, keeps on doing that. It keeps on doing that. The next time it'll come over. So, so this, this way we have two functions whose frequency is different by what? Anybody take a guess? So if, if this long one, if this long wave number one has a, if the long uh, period one has a k equal to one, what is the k corresponding to the gray line? So this is k equal to one, this is k equal to what? That makes sure 2 pi over delta x plus 1, right? So if you, if you think of this, so e to the j 
uh, 2 pi over delta x plus 1 times i delta x. I can expand it into a j of 2 pi over delta x cancels with this. So I get a 2 pi times i delta x cancels plus j i delta x. Right? And the first term, the first term, and I can write this as the, the exponential of summation is equal to the product of exponentials. And the first part is always equal to what? 1, right? So that means when I shift the frequency, and this happens for any k, this actually happens for any k. If I replace the 1 by k, this is, oh, so this is ki, sorry, ki delta x. This is going to be the exactly the same. So if I shift the frequency by 2 pi over x, delta x, or 4 pi over delta x, or 6 pi over delta x, I have exactly the same values at the grid points. Therefore, when I expand a discrete function in Fourier series, it only makes sense to have a k go in between minus n over 2 and n over 2 minus 1, where n is equal to the number of intervals, basically 2 pi over delta x. 2 pi is the whole length of the interval, delta x is the length of each interval, so n is the number of intervals over the domain. If I, for example, go all the way to 2n instead of 2n minus 1, then I have a duplication because k equal to minus n over 2 is the same as positive n over 2, right? They are exactly off by n, which is 2 pi over delta x. And we already said if I shift k by 2 pi over delta x is the same function on the discrete points. So this is what we call a discrete Fourier series instead of a continuous Fourier series. A continuous one goes from minus infinity to infinity, a discrete one. Because of this effect called aliasing, we always have k go from minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1. Alright? And uh, why is it called aliasing? There is a... Uh, anybody play video games? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> Some people. So, so when, you, when you draw a texture, when you have a 3D video game and you draw a certain texture, very, very far away from you, the texture is going to contain frequencies that is that is going to be under-resolved on the screen. Like, think of these grid points as pixels on your screen. And think of this wave as the color or the variation of the color on your texture that you want to draw on the surface far, far away. What you end up seeing is some pattern that has nothing to do with the texture you are drawing, but looks like just the blob of weird things that emerges from the faraway texture, and that is called aliasing. And anti-aliasing is one of the key technologies of video gaming. So many different ways. One way is you, you basically do a, some sort of smoothing to the texture before you draw it. Another way is you actually oversample, which means I'm going to draw the texture at a resolution that is a lot higher than my screen resolution and then display it. So there are ways to deal with it. But this aliasing is the same as the aliasing we have in solving differential equations.